Hi all, today we will continue our series with developing folder operations on the client side. What does this mean? We will create, edit, delete and view folders we create in the browser and interact with our backend. There is a lot of work going into creating these videos and I appreciate each and every one of you who are taking the time to give these videos a like or even leave a comment. It takes just a second to like the video, so if you enjoy this series of coding a complex web app on the iPad, please do like the video as it helps a lot to reach other people and it helps a lot this channel to grow so I can produce more of these type of videos and tutorials for you all. Now without further ado, let's get into the coding part. First thing I want to do is install a plugin called Newmorphism. Newmorphism is a design concept and if you want to learn more about it, I'm gonna link a few resources at the bottom of this video, but I find it really cool and I think it fits very well with the concept of this project, meaning it fits very well with creating an online photo album and to apply this design to it. So in order to install Newmorphism, I will go to the client folder and here I'm gonna type npm i from install tailwind css because I want to install the tailwind css plugin of Newmorphism. You can also create your own css files but I prefer to use tailwind css plugin as we already use tailwind css minus Newmorphism. And now we have to wait a bit until this gets installed and then we will continue with changing the style of what we already have. Great, now if you wonder what change in our code server IDE, if we will go under package.json, we will see that Tailwind CSS Newmorphism has been added. Now in order for us to be able to work with it, we have to add it to Tailwind config.js. And to do that, we will of course add it under the plugins section. So here I'm just gonna say require Tailwind CSS Newmorphism. And that's it, now we can actually use it. I'm gonna close all the tabs here so that we can start slowly implementing it. First place where I want to implement it is in index.html and here on the body I will add class background gray 200 which is a light gray. And this is it for now. For all the other files I will just copy paste the HTML as it's pretty easy to understand and I'm not gonna go through all the Tailwind CSS classes for that, it's easy for you to have a look. You also have the GitHub URL in the description below if you wanna check the code. So next we will change the header component and I'm gonna replace the whole content inside the template with the content I'm gonna copy paste. I will move on with the home view and for the home there's nothing we need to change specifically for now. Let's give it a try and see how it looks. So let's open the terminal here, we will do as usual npm run dev. Now let's go and try it on port 8081 and as you can see we have a new design. For me it's more like paper-like design which fits so well with the photo album. So now that we're done with the designing part of our uh, project, let's move forward with creating the folder view. So the first thing that I want to do is under components, I'm gonna create a folder.view file. Let me stop our development server so that we have more screen available to us. Now for the folder.view I'm just gonna type in here view so that I get the template in. And at this moment what I want to show here is just one single folder. But in order to have that folder I need first to get the folder from the database. Before we do that let's just create the structure and then we will go through getting it from the database and everything else. So first thing I'm gonna do I'm just gonna create a dummy folder. So I'm gonna copy paste the code again and here where the title of the folder should be I'm just gonna say test folder. When we have multiple folders obviously we'll have to create a view where we display all the folders. So the next view I'm gonna create is the folders.view. So once again new file under components folders.view and in here I want to create a for loop so that I am able to display all the folders. But once again, since we don't have the folders from the database, 
I'm just gonna create a few dummy folders. So once again, we go by saying view so that we can get the template in. I'm gonna create a diff here with class ML6. I'm gonna create another diff here with class grid. And also I want to have four columns in this grid. You can choose as many as you want with gap four between the colors and with the margin top 10 and all I want to do is just add my folder view here in order to be able to add my folder view inside the script element I will import folder from folder view and inside the export default I'm gonna have a components object which will take my folder component all the external components that you want to call here you have to import them and then declare them in the components object under the export default. Now that we have that, now we have to add this folders view inside our home view. So we go to home view and here under the header, I will add folders. Now, just as we did before, we need to import folders. So we will do just the same as we did before, import folders from components folders and we declare it under components this is it let's try to start again our application and see how that looks like npm run dev and now if we go back to our home page we see that we have a test folder here it doesn't look amazing of course but for now we just have an idea of how this would look like so now the next step is to retrieve the folders from the database and display them here so let's do that in order to do that we will use a concept called a composable a composable is nothing else than a function which does all the business logic that we need in order to in this case retrieve all the folders and then we will call this composable inside our components so under the source folder we will create another folder called composables under the composable folder we will add a new file called getfolders.js inside here i'm gonna import ref from view and i'm gonna explain to you a bit later when we use it why i'm gonna do that and i'm gonna start declaring my function i'm gonna call it get folders i will take no parameters and here i'm gonna define two constants one will be folders and I'm gonna use a ref here. We are using ref to be able to define reactive variables, which means variable which can dynamically change, but also that we can reference them inside other DOM elements. When I say dynamically change, means that if I change a component inside the browser, this variable dynamically changes along with that component if we link them together. So that's why we use ref. And the other one I want to use is error, which will be initialized to null. Now I'm gonna create a load function, which would be asynchronous, and I'm gonna create a try catch block. Inside the try catch block, what I want to do is to create a data variable which will await to fetch the folders from our server and that is 10.55.01 on port 3000 from the folders endpoint. I'm gonna define an object also inside this method which will take the method which is get and some headers and inside the headers we will define accept and you guessed it application slash json. Now what we'll do is we'll say if our data doesn't contain OK, meaning that the fetch failed, then I'm gonna throw an error. And in the error, I'm gonna say no data available. Otherwise, under folders.value, because this is how you reference the value of a ref variable, folders.value, I'm gonna say await data.json. And here in the error part, I'm gonna say once again error.value because error is a ref variable equals error.message and also I want to log this error and I want that my function get folders to return folders error and load and at the bottom I'm just gonna export default get folders and this is our composable. Now in the home view, we have to call our composable to get the data and then pass it into the folders component. So as I said, under components, 
in the export default we will create a setup function and here we will get our folders so I'm gonna declare some constants and I'm gonna say folders error and load exactly what we return from get folders and I'm gonna call the get folders composable and as you probably guessed we also have to import it and here we have to learn how to import a composable it's a bit different than importing a component so I'm gonna say import get folders from and here I'm gonna use the at sign composables get folders and now we can call it here in the setup function I'm gonna call the load method here so that I can retrieve all the folders and I'm gonna return the folders and the error. Now that we have that we have to pass these folders into our folders view and how do we do that? Well let's first create a div and in this div I want to display my folders only if I have some folders coming from the database. So here I'm gonna say vif folders dot length and I can call folders here because I just return them from the setup function and inside this div I'm gonna move our folders component so now I'm only displaying this folders component when I have some folders coming from the database the next step is to pass in the folders to the folders component so I'm gonna call it still folders and inside this I'm gonna pass in the folders that is returned from the setup method. Cool, now that this is done, let's take these folders and display them inside the folders.view. So we move to folders.view and here we need to pass each folder to the folder component. So we'll have to create a for loop in which we display our folder component and we pass in each folder to the folder component. So in order to do that, in the export default, we need to create a props array and this props array will take in our folders that come from home where we call this component. Now once again I'm gonna create another div here and I'm gonna loop over all the folders and pass each one as I said to the folder component. So I'm gonna say v4 folder in folders and for this we also need to define a key which means what is the unique value and here we have of course folder.uuid and now we move this folder component into the div and we have to pass in the folder so just as we did before we'll say here folder equals to folder and that's it now we passed in each folder to the folder component and as you guessed now we move to the folder component and here in folder.view just as we did before we define props and of course here in props we pass in folder which comes from the folder component and up here in the template instead of the test folder we will remove this between double curly brackets we will call folder dot name to get the name of the folder and this is it now we will see all the folders that we have in our database and as you remember we added a few folders in our database so let's see if they are still there npm run dev and as we see here we have no folders added now if we go into chrome browser under chrome inspect we see that the load is failed why did that happen It's because we need to set up the course options in the server so that we can call the server from our view client so let's go ahead and do that inside server js we need to declare a course constant which will be require course and here i will call app use course and I'm gonna say origin and I'm gonna put star normally you just whitelist the URLs that you want to call I'm just gonna put star because it's easier like that and we make sure that we can call it from everywhere so the next thing we need to do now is to install course module so I'm gonna say npm i course now I'm gonna do npm run dev I'm doing it directly on the Raspberry Pi and not in the ID so that I can see any potential errors cool now let's go into the browser so one error that I saw that didn't allow us to load our folders is that in the home.view I missed an S after folders so now everything should be okay let's see if our server is still started yeah the server is running now let's open Chrome we started the logging and let's try to go and see 10 55 80. 81. and now as you can see we can see all the folders but also inside this we see the iPhone 13 and the Canon M50 which have a parent folder so they shouldn't be in the home screen they should be under the folder that they belong to but that 
we will fix it in our next episode. So the plan for the next episode is to be able to add a folder and to be able to put the folders which have a parent under their parent folder and not be displayed in our home page. I really hope that you found this video informative and that you enjoyed this episode about creating and designing our front end. If you did or if you have any suggestions, please take a moment to leave a comment below. Don't forget to like the video as it helps with the YouTube algorithm so that more people can benefit from this course. Also please don't forget to subscribe and press the bell button to receive notifications when the next episode of the series will be released. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.